morning, I'm Andrew Topp with Investing News Network, and I'm here with Mickey Falk, publisher of the Mercenary Geologist Newsletter. Mickey, thanks for joining me. Always my pleasure. Today we're going to be talking about graphite, and uh, Mickey, at the Cambridge House show in Vancouver recently, there wasn't a lot of talk about graphite. Prices, as you know, have come off about 50% from their mm -hmm. 2011 peak. Uh, what's going on in the graphite market right now to keep the prices so low? Well, that was probably the quickest commodity bubble I've ever seen. So we had this spike in prices driven by uh, increasing demand, but uh, the idea that uh, China was running out of good graphite. And so the prices went way up and about $2,500 for flake graphite and immediately came back down or a few months later. So now we're looking more or less $1,500 per ton for flake graphite. Uh, so the bloom's off the rose a little bit in, in this sector. Okay. Is the lower price affecting the valuations of emerging producers? Absolutely. And, and along with the price spike, we had a spike in not only the number of juniors, but their market caps. Uh, when I started looking at graphite space in 2000, early 2011, uh, there were two juniors that had graphite projects as their main focus. And uh, by a year ago, there was about 50. There's probably less than that right now, but the ju juniors, as is their want, it, they, they heard it in along with all the others. So there was this little graphite boom um, that hasn't really panned out. Okay. Um, finding a good graphite project to invest in can be tricky, as you mentioned, a lot of companies out there. Um, it's not just the size of the, the deposit that's important, but it's also the grade of um, carbon and the type of graphite. So what criteria do you use to evaluate junior projects? Well, in graphite space, big is not better. Uh, because it's a very much a niche market. It looks, you know, I've talked to uh, half a dozen graphite experts this week, uh, both in public companies and private companies. I've talked to financiers, geologists, mining engineers, metallurgical engineers. Now, I know quite a lot of, in a general sense about graphite space, but I'm no expert, so I did go to the experts. Here's what you need. You need, number one, you need a high-grade deposit. So kind of the bottom line for that is I would consider anything at 5% or better in the right situation to have a chance. You want, really want better than that. You need good infrastructure because this is a commodity that trades by the ton, not by the pound or kilogram. So it essentially functions in, in a small way as a bulk as a bulk commodity. So you gotta have the infrastructure, then you need uh, flake size. And flake size is basically the grain size of the graphite. So there's amorphous graphite, uh, fine flake, medium flake, large flake, and now there's a new term called jumbo flake. So you need uh, to, to meet what where demand's going to be, generally you're going to need to be in that large flake uh, environment because that's what's carrying the, the value per ton. $1,500 for uh, large flake graphite, about $500 a ton more or less for amorphous graphite. Okay. And this week we published a couple of news stories on the graphite space. Uh, Sierra Resources said its Balama project is the largest graphite resource in the world. What can you tell us about this resource and, and Sierra's ability to develop it? Well, they have a huge inferred resource. Uh, uh, the numbers escape me right now, but it's, it's uh, I think, uh, 145 uh, million tons, more or less, of, uh, in, a new, in a new resource estimate. And it grades very good. It's 15% graphite mm -hmm. uh, in, this, uh, in this particular resource. Uh, but once I sa said once before that big is not really better. So, so they have good infrastructure in Mozambique, uh, close to a highway, close to a port. It looks like they've got a decent graphite deposit. Looks like it's going to be high grade. But they have this idea that they're going to take over the world's graphite market. And I think that's uh, uh, a fallacy. You know, you need to ha find your customers. You need to be a niche producer. Uh, some people that are really in the know, been in the graphite business for uh, well over 100 years, have told me they think that 
100,000 tons of graphite in the Western world, flake graphite, will supply all needs. So, so I, I do not at this point question Sierra Resources uh, deposit. What I would can question right now is the viability of their of their giant plans to develop a giant graphite mine. And as you say, uh, bigger can actually be a detriment if you end up producing so much graphite that it pushes down the price. Right, you'll put yourself out of business. So it looks to me like if they did what they say they're trying to do, they had flood the market with graphite and the price had dropped and they put themselves out of business. Yeah. Uh, and the other problem with these bigger is better things is you can't mine enough tonnage and sell enough uh, graphite tonnage to justify huge capex. So capex, small capex is very important in this space too. Okay. So we also wrote about Zenyatta Ventures saying that its Albany deposit in, in Ontario is similar to the high grade deposits uh, of graphite found in Sri Lanka. So what has Zenyatta got and why has it garnered so much attention in the market? This stock has, has been a real barn burger and it's been a five bagger over the last year. Well, it's quite a puzzle to me. Um, they have made claims that they are, that their deposit is equivalent to Sri Lanka vein or lump graphite, uh, which commands some of the highest price in the world. Uh, Sri Lankan graphite comes out of the mine at 90%, plus or minus 90% purity. It's coarse crushed and it's hand sorted. And it does, but it's a very small niche market, certainly less than 1% of the entire uh, natural graphite market. Uh, what the other thing they're claiming is they have an ultra high purity deposit. Well, they have five to 6% graphite drilled and compare that to 90% in the actual vein deposit, the vein type graphite of Sri Lanka. Uh, they are saying that they can purify it to ultra high purity with acid leaching. Well, anybody in the world can purify their graphite to 99.95% or most companies can do that with acid leaching. Northern Graphite's already done that. So other people have done that. That claim just absolutely does not hold up. It appears to me, uh, based on a photomicrograph they put on their website, they have an amorphous graphite deposit that runs five to six percent. It is uh, they claim great infrastructure. They are at least 30 kilometers, 30 kilometers from a highway. They are 30 kilometers from a gas pipeline. Uh, they are 30 kilometers from power. They are 70 kilometers from a railway in the James Bay area of Northern Ontario. I do not consider that uh, 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 great infrastructure. So I really question what's going in the market on that and uh, personally, uh, is, I would not invest in a graphite play that has those characteristics. Uh, uh, I think people should be very cautious with that company right now. Okay. Um, what about Energizer Resources? They have a project in Madagascar, right? And it appears to be a pretty good deposit. It's Again, it's one of these huge things. Uh, uh, it, although it only grades six, a little bit more than 6% graphite, but certainly they have made a big graphite discovery. The problem I would have with Energizer is they are very far from infrastructure. There is essentially no infrastructure in the central part of Madagascar of the Long Island. They're in the center part of that Long Island. Okay. And I don't see that they could... Uh, uh, possibly develop a graphite deposit in the near term. So with graphite space, as with uh, rare space and a lot of these specialty uh, markets, the first in production is going to satisfy demand and then we're going to have a bunch of juniors laying by the roadside as roadkill. Okay. Uh, do you have any other graphite companies that you're following right now? Well, I, as I said, I've been studying this market uh, since uh, 2011. Uh, I made a decision in late 2011 to get involved with a particular graphite company. It remains my favorite. And I will let the readers go on my website. I've written three or four pieces about graphite. I've talked about it extensively. Go to my website, uh, mercenarygeologist.com, under the musings, and find out the graphite play that I have put my hard earned in dollars in and the one I'm very excited about. Okay. 
Simon Morris from Industrial Minerals said recently he thinks the graphite price has bottomed. So what would be the catalyst for a price increase, do you think? I'll leave that to Simon Morris of, uh, of uh, uh, Industrial Minerals because these guys actually study these markets. And, and I'm a generalist in commodity space, so I know a, a, a little bit about a lot of commodities. So those sorts of price projections, I'll leave to them. But I would say if you can't make money, if you can't, uh, make money with very good margins at $1,500 a ton uh, for flake graphite. And I really think that flake graphite is the only opening we have in this business. Uh, then I'd say you don't belong in the graphite business. Okay. Uh, where do you stand on graphene? Um, as, as you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about graphene when it comes to graphite. There's a lot of research going on. But it seems that we're quite a ways still from commercial production. Do you think there will ever, there will eventually be a market for graphene? Well, I think there will be, but I think that market's ten years away. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for me and for most of the people in that are invested in a graphite business, it makes no difference what's going on in the graphene market. Uh, the industry professionals seem to think the the science and technology of it is going to be solved long before the commercialization of the product. I think we can safely say there are no soon-to-be or current graphite producers that, uh, that will have a net present value at this point with, with their ideas about graphene. That is so long down in the future, at least a decade away, in my opinion. Okay. Well, Mickey, thanks for your insights. It's always interesting to speak about uh, different commodities and uh, getting your insights on graphite today and some of the companies that are uh, involved in the space. So thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Andrew. I've been Andrew Topp for Investing News Network. Thanks for joining me.